Um, I live in central Wisconsin. I've hunted here, lived here my whole life. Um, and ever since I was really little, we've had some sort of albino or piebald deer population in that area. Um, and it was quite small for many years. And over the last, I would say three to five years, that population has greatly increased. I feel like it's something that you don't hear a lot about that the, the natural, the Wisconsin DNR doesn't talk about much as it being a growing issue, but just I, uh, where I hunt and where I, the area I live in, I'm kind of in the center of it. So I'm, I'm seeing it kind of encroach on a lot of other hunting properties where there's a rising population of these piebald deer, um, that can't be harvested. And I know, um, so my, my dad owned a local grocery store there. So he got to talk to a lot of local hunters and they were saying the same thing that, you know, there were so many deer on their properties that they couldn't harvest things like that. So I just kind of wanted to hear your, your input on the albino piebald harvest restrictions. If, if it's a good thing, if it's a bad thing, what is the benefit of having them in the population? And just a little more information for people like that. Well, that's, that's a great question. Uh, I do get asked that, but that's a great question and, and I'd be happy to answer it. First of all, let's just go through the different color phases and situations of deer. You've got the pie ball, which is essentially looks like a pinto, okay? Mm-hmm. You've, got, you've got white deer that have normal colored eyes, which are not albinos. They're white deer. You've got albinos that have pink eyes. And then very rarely, and only I think here in Texas, we have some populations of black deer, okay? mm-hmm. All right, I'll start with black deer and work my way back. Black deer are double recessive. That that means that you've got to have a black deer bring black deer to get a black deer. So it's a very rare situation. So you hardly ever see it anywhere. Uh, the albino is a recessive trait. So again, you've got to have an albino breed with an albino. The white deer are dominant. You can breed if you breed a white buck to a white doe about at least half of their offspring are going to be white. Okay. Now the pie ball is a, when I see pie ball deer, it is a dead giveaway to inbreeding. A lot of times they will uh, have uh, Roman noses. They'll, they'll be dwarf. There'll be some dwarfism. In them. Uh, and they rarely ever have really big antlers. Now, the minute I said that somebody in Wisconsin is going to have killed the pie ball deer and big antlers, but, we work on the average and not the exceptions, okay? So I use pie balls as an indicator that you've got an inbred herd, right? If you've got an inbred herd, that's a management problem. And I don't see any reason on this earth to protect my pie ball deer, and I do not. I, one of the places that I manage, and I manage it all throughout every state from Mexico to Canada, and if I see pie ball deer, I take them out. But it's a... But it's a sure indication that what you've got is an inbred herd. How do you get an inbred herd? What, uh, one of those things we go back to the to the harvesting too many bucks kind of deal. If you got if you got really skewed sex ratios, you, you can become inbred uh, pretty easily that way. Uh, the uh, the white deer, they're like I don't know if y'all are familiar. There was a military ref, uh, reserve in. Uh, uh, New York that had was was because it was a military preserve. It was high fence with a cyclone fence, and it had a, a notable white deer population in it. And they made white shooting white deer illegal. And there was no biological reason to support that, other than the people in that area liked white deer. Sure. So you know that's the justification for protecting a color phase of deer is that somebody likes it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if, they, if people want to do that, that's fine. If you want to keep white deer out there, it really doesn't hurt the genetics of the herd. Certainly, the black deer don't hurt any genetics whatsoever. But pie balls are a dead giveaway that you've got an injury problem. Mm-hmm. That's thanks for answering that because I've, um, myself, Brendan, and Dylan, we all have mo- wildlife backgrounds, and I remember. You know, when we were going to school, one of the things they talked about was inbreeding as a 
showing that you're having a bottleneck in your population. So that definitely clears it up. I, and I know some of the, the reasons I think we have them in the area, there was a lot of local game farms at one point that had white deer populations in them and they're believed to have escaped. So maybe yeah. that is the driving reason of why we're seeing them a lot more, but I've always felt too, that it's something that I f- feel like the DNR needs to address at some point. Otherwise yeah. it's going to get worse. Um, yeah. and all were, is, oh, sorry, go ahead. Not albinos. Then, uh, I told you before that white deer is a dominant trait, so they can they can pretty well take over an area. The, mm-hmm. the white ones can, the pinos can't, and so yeah, it's just possible. There, uh, you've got a, or had a couple of breeders in Wisconsin that specialized in in highballs and uh, white deer, mm-hmm. uh, and I don't know there's right now at all, but uh, but they were specializing in it. I've seen. Um a little bit of everything in that local population between, you know, true albino deer, piebald and white deer. So it's, it's a big mix of everything there. Yeah. Dylan, you want, you had something? Yeah, no, I was just going to kind of back up what you were saying is I actually, the legend is in, in the area, it's actually my wife's, my wife's side of the family, my in-laws had a deer farm and they were raising a lot of white deer and, some stray dogs got in, ran the deer around. They broke down the fence. A few of the white deer got into the population. And it's just been every year you see more and more of these white deer. So what you were saying about the dominant trait in the white deer, a lot of the ones that we see, at least the ones that I've seen, aren't albino. They're just white deer. So that yeah. makes sense, what yeah. you're saying about the dominant trait actually kind of being more and more prominent every year. That's very feasible. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And that's, a, that's about a 30-mile square area that, that is covered now in in the state of wisconsin it's interesting you guys <clears throat> no matter how they got there they make for some great pictures <laughs> definitely well they're beautiful i mean I, I enjoy seeing them you know you know on, on a side note uh there's been some good dna studies that have shown uh, you know back back in in the restoration days in the 40s and 50s uh they actually didn't really care where they got their deer. they were just trying to get them back and so they carry deer from all over. Good. One of the reasons why, like, for example, in Alabama, they've got this such a late, late breeding season is that they brought in some Mexican deer. And they're, they're really notorious for breeding late. But, but the DNA has shown that they don't really move that all that far, that you can still find them genetically. You can find those pockets where uh, deer have been released. In Georgia, uh, a lot of Wisconsin deer were brought in in one specific area in Georgia, and they, that's where some of their biggest bucks are coming from. And, and you can, you know what what Wisconsin deer look like, and southern deer are a lot grayer, and they 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 stick out, you know, like a sore thumb uh, right. out there in the woods. And it it it, it created a, an old wives' tale that uh, uh, a lot of people, uh, the the local people around the south, tell me. You know, we have two kinds of deer. We have gray deer and red deer, or her, they call them Hereford deer. And they, they say the red deer live in the uplands and the her, and the gray deer live in the bottomlands. And, it, it, you know, they've got a whole lore about them, which, which sure. is not even true in 